How's it going, everyone? My name is Luke Salton here from the Hockey Authority Podcast, and today I'm joined by two Nova Scotia-born hockey players, Luke Foley and Lane Sim. Thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. So getting into things, you guys both recently just got drafted into the CHL um, lane to OHL Luke to the queue. Kind of walk me through your draft experiences. Yeah, so my draft was actually in person in Quebec. So, I mean, you just like they do a really good job. So going up, you sort of have an idea of the teams that are interested in you and and I was fortunate enough to go to Cape, so I mean, I'm sort of, look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But overall, it was just a good experience. Yeah, I was drafted to the Sarny Sting. Uh, it's a great organization, and I only told a couple teams I was going to the OHL, Sarny Sting, and the London Knights, and I, I kind of snuck into it, not like not knowing all the teams knew I was going there, and yeah, it was online and. Next day, I was actually leaving to go to Nationals in St. Hyatt. So growing up in Nova Scotia, a little towns, then starting to get attention for the draft, what is that like throughout your communities? Yeah, it's big, small towns. Like, I'm from Pictou County. He's from Valley or Berwick, where are you from? Yeah, yeah I'm from New Glasgow. Yeah, it's not like it's up in Halifax where everyone's getting drafted. Our small towns, like... Only a couple of kids are getting drafted a year. Yeah, I mean, I live in a really small town, so yeah, it was definitely big for me to get drafted. I mean, a lot, like not everyone from where I'm from gets opportunities like that, so that was definitely super cool, and it was uh, it was definitely good for the community. Growing up, have you guys had a role model that played in the QMJHL or in the CHL in general or the O or whatever? Uh, I mean, I like I like Matthew to Chuck. I mean, he's kind of a nail gun, so he's kind of a beauty. Hard to play against. What you want on your team, no one wants to play against him. So I think now he'd definitely be a guy that I like to watch. Yeah, probably uh, probably my brother. Honestly, he was drafted in London, and like I'm pretty close with all of his friends who were drafted to uh, the Quebec League, so yeah, growing up around that was pretty cool. Routines, pre and post game, what are kind of some weird routines that you guys have implemented into your game? I don't know, honestly. Me and my buddy Ben, we like to go take a sh** before a game. <laughs> Most every back, every oh, game. No, not right, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have many. I mean, it changes daily. Sometimes I'll go up on the track with the boys. Sometimes I'll just sit in the room and listen to music or play ping pong or anything, but I don't usually take shits before games <laughs> like Lane. <laughs> sewer games are pretty sweet, too. Yeah, we sweet. take sewer really serious here, Nick, yeah. though. It's pretty hard to win sewer, though, because every third year in the league has, like, six cards. <laughs> like, when you're a rookie, I'm you play. I'm when, you're, when you're playing sewer as a rookie, it's like... You do one thing wrong and then someone just bounces you immediately, so. Who do you think's the better sewer player between you two? I think Lane's a better, like Lane's pretty good at sewering people. Like he'll like kick it at your face and stuff and like your, like your sack, but I don't know. We didn't play that, well we played a can of games. I mean, I won a couple games, but I think you won a couple as well, so. I mean, when we were there, we were t we had a lot of cards, though. We both did. We did, we did really leave the game. So me, you, me, you, pads, me, you, pads, will leave the game. Yeah. Now you're talking about Canada games. Just walk us through that um, experience and what it was like, kind of getting a first look at the next level. Yeah, it was unreal, honestly. Like the experience there. Really hard competitions, though, like playing Ontario, Sask, Alberta. It was a BC. Yeah, BC. BC. Yeah, it was, it was unreal, though. Yeah, I think, like, as far as it comes from that, like, just to go off what of Lane said, it was a good experience. But when you're going there, it's like Team Nova Scotia, you don't really have anything to lose because teams don't really expect you to win. Like, those teams are almost expected to win. So, like, we're just going in there, like, trying to win. And, like, like I said, we don't, we're not 
technically supposed to win, people don't think we're gonna. So it was a lot of fun, but other than that, I think the I think the rose was definitely the funnest part of it all. Like yeah. six to sixteen guys in one room. There was definitely a bunch of good laughs in there. Oh yeah, this guy got sewered. He had to stay with a bunch of like skiers, skiers and stuff. But I was in the room with the sixteen <laughs> players, and it was definitely it was a good time. Now, so you guys are having a good time. Then uh, Lane's talking about his slopes and what jump he's going to hit next time he goes to Ski Hill. But, I mean, continuing on, just the crowds and even people um, coming over from Nova Scotia, how much did that mean for that many people just rooting for you out there? Yeah, I think our games in Summerside, we definitely had, like, our parents, obviously, lots of family and friends from Nova Scotia. But I think... I think the best game for us when it came to crowd was definitely the game versus Newfoundland at uh, McLaughlin. That was pretty sick, and I, I think a lot of teams there were cheering for us as well. So I think that was definitely a huge crowd, probably the biggest crowd I've ever played in front of. So that was definitely super cool. Yeah, it was pretty sweet, honestly. Like all our families were there, but like all like all the teams were there because like it's a two-minute walk from where we were staying. So yeah, it was pretty sweet. The big rivalry, taking down Newfoundland, what was that like? Yeah, it was pretty sick. I got a couple of buddies on that team, Pettigrew and the boys. Yeah, it was pretty sweet, honestly. In front of all those people, too, it was sick. Yeah, I think, like, definitely the crowd helped us that game. I think, I mean, our goalie was pretty sick that game, Stoddard. But I thought going into it, we knew what we had to do as a team. And obviously, we were pretty successful that game. But... I think the crowd was definitely a big part of why we won that game. I mean, it shows like the rivalry because this guy tries to go in between the legs, I see. What was going through your mind there, Lane? Yeah, well, 2 on one then the back checker like poke checked it off my stick and then I didn't have time to get over the rupee. So I just put it between my legs. Almost when I thought it went in, but it Donald Hickey shutting the door. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Donald that game. He had that tape job, couldn't miss him. So, <laughs> yeah, that game was sort of like Dude, that was, we we sort of got at a point. We sort of got at a point during that game in that tournament. Like me personally, like Chandler was sort of just like on a tear there. So I was sort of just like get it to him and like get out of the way a tiny bit in a sense. <laughs> like when we needed goals. Yeah. How about your sign? Oh yeah, the, we were fortunate enough to get the signs made from the, what was that, the Ringette team? Ringette team song. Anyways, I mean, mine wasn't bad, but B Peds was a sewer. Brady Pedal's sign said, we, what was it say? It said, it said something like, it said, A, what number was he? I don't know, it said something about, we know your brother, but we don't know you, which yeah. was pretty nails. No, so. it, no, it was like, hey, 17, I heard you have a brother. Yeah, some nails, some just like get him going. So for years, it must have been about the number because it said 10 out of 10. It could have been about the looks, as we know. I don't know. I guess it must have been the skill. Now, what's a funny story from the Canada Games experience? Um... Uh, we were fortunate enough to stay on the same floor as Team Northwest Territories. Those Roy. guys were crazy. Shout out Roy. Shout out Roy. Yeah, they had some. They had some characters on their team. Definitely. I think when we weren't playing, we were definitely spending a lot of time with those guys. Uh, the boys had a little slip and slide going on in their room. <laughs> they put the speaker yeah. in the roof. It was pretty wild. Yeah, I, I like. I remember like what the rooms looked like when we left and it was not like it was not pleased i have a couple of friends on the pi team and i remember they send me like a snapchat as they're leaving and there's like pizza boxes on the whole floor like they, they were just masses yeah i mean i was i stayed the whole time so i didn't leave till sunday and i remember when we left we got a call to come back had to our room like a group of us because it was so dirty. <laughs> and I remember like <laughs> we had a couple guys, man, like that just like no organization skills like whatsoever, like just clothes like literally everywhere. 
Yeah. I, well, I wasn't there. I, I left a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah. I heard, I heard the stories, though. It was, like, crazy. Yeah. So was Canada Games, well, obviously with Team Nova Scotia, through Canada Games, you had a couple other events, but was Team Nova Scotia the first time you guys have ever met each other or started playing with each other? No. No, we've, I've, we've been tight with all the boys. Like me, I've knew him since first, yeah, second I mean, year Pee I mean, a couple guys on the Canada Games team, that was the first time we've played and like got to become close with them. But as far as it comes from like Lane and Brady and Cole, like we've always like gone to Nova Scotia camps together and always yeah. played against each other. But I think that definitely like sort of certified. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a long process yeah. too. Like Anna Kanesh camp, we we're there for a week staying in yeah, the Yeah, we like, we met our coaches for Canada Games and our first going into our first year of Bantam. Yeah. So like they were the coaches of the U fourteen team, which obviously we didn't get to go to because of COVID, but Looking at your Canada Games team, it seemed like you guys had a pretty tight group, so we're going to pick on a few. First up, give me your best style on and off the ice, then we're going to get to our worst style on and off the ice. You want me to go first? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean like like clothes, like what people uh, wear, or like, on, or like everything in general? Um, I'd say best style, probably Lane. Like I think... He was usually probably, he was pretty dripped out going to the rink and had the back Euro tuck on the skates. Worst die, gotta be Kenzie Wagner. <laughs> guy just looks like a dad going around the rink. Like, guy's just dialed in with like, like dad shoes on and like shin pads are like 17 inch, like way over the laces. Like guy just like <laughs> fishbowl on. Like he was definitely had like the worst eye there by far. I think uh, worst, I mean best eye on and off the ice, uh, Legier. Oh yeah, Legier. Uh, off the ice, Legier has some sick eye. Yeah. Worst eye though, I don't know, honestly. I go with Wags too. Like he's just a dad. Bro, honestly. like I remember taking the bus to Canada Games, and guys just like just had like shirts untucked, like buttons weren't even even on their shirts and stuff. Like just looked like absolute tools. So during the Can Games, I asked a couple of the other teams this. You guys lived with each other for the first time ever for a while. Was there any of the boys that just like their hygiene wasn't there? Like they weren't taking showers. Or just like, was there anything like that where you're like, seriously, man? I don't know if anyone was taking showers, but <laughs> man, I don't even know. Like, do you got anyone? Dude, I was in the other room. I stayed with, I was fortunate enough to stay with Jack Hayden. Shout out That's to Jack sweet. Hayden. He's That's a sweet. sweet guy. You should get him on the podcast if you ever can. But, um,. Stonehouse was a little bit out to lunch, man, all the time. <laughs> like, he would, yeah. I, no joke, every single time we left for anything that was on time, our whole team would be lit, waiting at the elevator for Stonehouse. Yeah. Like, he'd be just getting out of the shower, and we'd be ready to go to the meal hall. Yeah. So, Stonehouse was definitely like, bro, like, what are you doing right now? Yeah, I had a pretty sweet dorm. It was uh, me, Wags, Legier, and uh, Conrad. <laughs> And the boys were with the biathlon team and the ski team. And shit yeah, why don't you give us a little, tell us about that, Lane. What? Tell us about your uh, biathlon uh, peers. No, nothing about that. But the ski team is, like, they're all beauties. One of the guys won, like, bronze, and we all got, like, hype with him. And, like, who was his, oh, my God, what's his name? Big D. We called him Big D because I guess he... Yeah, yeah, that's the guy I was talking about, the biathlon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what I was hoping you were going to go to there. <laughs> but like, Yeah, it was, he was he was like 25 and he was like doing events or something. Yeah, I thought he was like a, like a coach or something yeah, when I first saw him. Now, like, I'm going to point you guys out here. Like, you and Newfoundland had by far the worst uniforms in the Canada Games. Like, what are we doing? Like, the other provinces were getting special Canada Games jerseys. We got the plain old hockey Nova Scotia with the white, or with the silver cages. <laughs> like, who's looking silver? Like, you're not going to try to look at yourself in the mirror when you're playing hockey. Like, what's your opinion on those, and who do you think had the worst style? And you guys are probably biased and think you have the best style, but who has the worst and best style team-wise with the uniforms? Um... 
I thought the, our, I thought our white jerseys were bad. I like their white. I liked jerseys. our whites to be ones, honest. The blue ones, ones were a little. Cool. I didn't like how the blue socks didn't yeah. match the arms. Yeah. But, but you want to go first with worst and best style, or you want me to? I think uh, worst style was BC. Their cages were like oh, all the warrior helmets. Yeah, yeah I like their jerseys, but their cages were sick. like yeah, their helmets and cages were a little messed up. And best jerseys, uh, ooh, New Brunswick. Yeah, yeah New Brunswick did it. You weren't a fan of New Brunswick's? Their uniforms, like their cages and pant shells were sick, but their jerseys were kind of ugly. They had some nasty gloves, too. Yeah, they were the only team. I thought worst I had to be none of it. They had, like, oh, neon yeah. green, <laughs> no. neon yellow. No. I don't know what they had. <laughs> no. no. UConn's were sick. No, man, none of it looked like my hot team's jerseys. <laughs> yeah, worst... Worst unis was definitely none of it, by far. Yeah, like, they were pretty bad, but I have respect to them. They dumped my buddy Luke Inman into the boards. I'll roll the clip on the screen for the YouTube lit watchers, but, I mean, that was um, pretty funny, but I don't think they got a single goal all turn. As far as it came from nastiest die, I liked Manitoba's unis. Mm. Manitoba had some sick unis. Other, I, I mean, maybe you could have done better on the logo, but the gear. Ontario was sick. <laughs> I'm biased because that's where I'm from, but. The CCM that Manitoba had was pretty filthy, Sask, so. Too. No, Sask. I didn't like Sask. Why? Bauer. Alberta was sick too, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all had nasty jerseys. They all had nasty jerseys, yeah. Us and Newfoundland, on the other hand. So getting ready for the game. What's the tune? What's the pregame tunes? Like, what genre? What artist? Like, what are we going for? Personally, when I'm getting fired up, it's all over the place. What are you guys like? I mean... You were the ox. It went back and forth usually with me and Lane. Sometimes <laughs> if we wanted, like, more rap, we'd go Lane. But at the time... Rihanna. I don't know what it was about Canada oh, Games, dude. but Rihanna was bumping Rihanna for was Team bumping. Nova Scotia. So I had a pretty nasty playlist. So yeah, as far as... Honestly, came, Rihanna. I think I ran Ox most of Canada games. I mean, I think you had it for a tiny bit, but not for long. Maybe one or two games. Yeah, the boys loved Rihanna. Yeah, I had a sick Rihanna playlist. Going into the future, with your hockey careers, what's some goals that you have for yourselves, and how are you going to achieve them? Uh, hopefully go to, well, go to Sarney camp. I signed there, so I'll move there next year. Uh, hopefully crack the lineup, make the team and stuff, and then have a good year there. Then come back to Picto in the summer, have a good summer. Yeah, I'm sort of like, I'm sort of just working out right now. It's getting, try to make Cape. Obviously, that's my main focus right now. So that's where a lot of my attention is going to be this summer. Definitely is uh, getting ready for that camp. Just moving towards junior, it's going to be a big step. What have you guys been working on this offseason to obstacles in your way? Probably just, yeah, like you said, obviously it's going to be a bigger jump than what we're used to right now in the midget league. But I think when it really just simple, it like might sound cliche, but just speed and strength, really. That's like just the ability to think, too. I think this will be a big jump. Yeah, just the strength and stuff. Getting knocked off pucks is gonna be a lot like it's gonna be like a lot easier for them. Like if we don't get stronger and stuff, cause that's how young we are. And those like 20 year olds just gonna like knock us off the pucks super easily and just like getting stronger faster. Yeah. Kid walks up, said Luke or Lane. How do I get to where you were? What advice do you have for me to get drafted? What would you say? Yeah, I think there's definitely like, I think you sort of like get to an age where you start to, you got to get more dialed in. But I think the biggest goal, like a, a big factor of it is you, like, if you get too much dialed in, like, and you forget about the other things, you'll sort of start to drift away from it. So I think a good balance of like, obviously your interest outside of the rink with hockey is definitely important because you don't want to be all hockey and then drift yeah. away from it. But I think, as far as it comes from hockey, like you, you just gotta, you gotta love to do it, and you gotta have fun while you're doing it. And I think with 
with that and just keep pushing yourself like you can definitely get, get to where you want to be yeah like at a young age like peewee you got like you can't just play ho like you can play hockey like if like you don't play like, other sports but like if you play baseball like stay keep playing baseball like just don't like quit baseball because you want to be a hockey player like take your summers and play baseball and like when you're older, like you've seen, like all the other guys, older guys playing, not, like quitting baseball because they just want to focus on hockey, and you want to do the same thing. It's like you don't need to worry about that right now. You're too young and stuff, and like just working, like working hard every day, going on the ice and getting better, like in the gym, off the ice, being a good person and stuff. That's actually really good advice because athletics is. I'm like, do you look at some goalies? I'm gonna point out goalies. Like some goalies aren't very athletic. And they're just goalies, and it comes back at them. And players in general, just being an athlete and playing so many sports, how do you guys think that plays an impact into your performance on the ice? Well, I know personally from, like, interviewing in the queue, it's something they ask you whether or not you play other sports. I think it sort of just gives them the bait. Like, I, I, I really don't know why they ask you it, but I think it's almost in the direction of athlete, like, you're, if you play other sports, it can make you a lot more athletic for hockey. <laughs> and I think on like just go back to what I said before, like it just keep it it, it works other muscles and other stuff. So I think it's definitely important to play other sports yeah. growing up. Yeah, but he said basically, yeah. I had, no teams asked me like if you play other sports, but like yeah, it's great. It's really good to play other sports because like. Like I said, you're not just focusing on hockey all the time. You're living your other life and stuff. And like, yeah. That's the next question I'm gonna ask. What's like your weirdest interview question you've had in your interview process for your drafts? Um, a coach, uh, when I was getting interviewed before the draft, uh, one of the teams, I'm not gonna say the team, but they asked, uh, do you like a hard coach? Like, do you want a coach to scream at you? Or do you just want a laid back coach? Uh, they didn't really ask me any weird questions, but I thought it was pretty What cool. was your answer? I said I wanted a coach to like scream at me and so. Um, I had a pretty weird one actually. It was with a team. They yeah, asked a me. A French team. No, it wasn't a no. French team. They asked me, they asked me what my least favorite subject was in school. And then they asked me what my teacher in that class would say about like my like attitude in the class. I think it's almost in the direction of like whether or not I would just like be a goofball in the class. Man, if they asked my CEO teacher, career exploration teacher about me, I'd be done for because I don't think I did any work in that class. I think they're asking to see like what you'd be like even if you're doing yeah. something you don't. That's a pretty do. good question. Yeah, man. so, but I've heard, like, I've had a couple bodies show me, like, questionnaire, questionnaires that they had to answer, and it was, like, what animal do, would you compare yourself to? So, the boys were, like, coming to practice, and, like, my friend Rupi was saying, like, a team from Quebec was asking, like, if you had to take one person to war with you, who would it be? Yeah. Like, <laughs> The animal definitely is weird for me. I know yeah. you guys got asked that. But I guess, like, in a sense, like, you could sort of base their personality off what animal they would compare themselves to. No, if I, I've had teams that done that before, and I know of teams that done that. But that, like, this is a way off-topic question to what we're on. But you walk into a sports store, more so a hockey store, let's say a pro hockey life. Someone walks up, says, buy anything in the store, only one item. What would you buy? Probably a you're, drink. You're saying not, like, do I have all my hockey, hockey gear, though, when I buy it? I get one thing on top of all my hockey gear. Like, if you want something new. Oh, I'm definitely going and buying, like, a 24-pack of shin pad tape <laughs> right off the hop. I get a new stick. They're, like, 500 bucks these days, so, like... But you're not thinking, like, you're saying you want shin pad tape. You got $2,000 skates. You sell them, then you can get, like, well, I'm 400 not make, I'm not looking to flip them. <laughs> I'm looking at it for me, but I'm just thinking about, like, just this camp, for example, this weekend. I've asked everyone in the dressing room for shin pad tape. Fair enough. So if I had my own, that'd be prime. 
What's a surreal hockey moment that you're just sitting there and you say to yourself, is this real? Like, have you had anyone big call you or anything like that that you're like, wow, this is pretty cool? Uh, probably when... Probably when we won Atlantics, honestly, it was in the overtime. And like there, like we played Moncton in the finals, and like they're the defending champs who won Tell Us the year before. And like they're like all over us all game, and like it felt like God like wanted us to win. Like some of like the saves our goalie was making, and like when we won in overtime, like it was crazy. Like I've never felt like that way before. Yeah, I think it definitely a surreal moment for me was when we got letters for Canada Games. That was definitely super cool. I mean, to be able to represent your province at a national level and to be able to wear a letter was definitely something that you remember and you definitely take a lot of honor out of that. Leadership, you're mentioning that. Um, how important is it to be a leader in the dressing room? Yeah, well, I was the captain of the Canada Games team. And like, yeah, like just like knowing the coaches trust me and stuff, it just felt like unreal. And, to lead that team like off the ice just felt felt pretty sweet and do it fully and Allison and Conrad it was awesome yeah I thought I thought leadership on that team was super important because when we first like when the team got made it wasn't we were a quiet team like we had a lot of guys that were just like sitting there like never heard them speak before in our life so as far as it came from like guys that had letters I thought they definitely were ones that spoke a lot and were able to get people out of their shells. Now, I heard a rumor that Lane with you, you're the man of the people. Can you confirm or deny? Yeah, said it once. So, so I'll say what it again. What do you mean by that? I don't... He interviewed me at uh, Canada Games because I gave a stick away to, like, this, like, little kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. It was after the Newfoundland game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. John was pissed about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it, like, your cousin? It was, like, my... So, like, my... I'm like really close with like my owner from Bombers, like my Bannon team, like his nephew or grand, no, his grandson is like, he like loves me and Owen. So like I did like, you break the stick? It wasn't like broken, but it was like kind of broken. It was actually nasty. It was a what was it? I think it was like a red hyperlate. Like it was custom. He just hyper. bounced it away to some random kid. I've done this before. I'm going to name two things. You guys say this or that. It's going to be completely random. It'll be whatever. Just say one. Um, if you guys want to share the microphone, I'll just kind of say it. CCM or Bauer? CCM for me. Uh, both. Um, plain fries or poutine? I mean, you got to go poutine there. Like, <laughs> Plain fries. I agree with that. That's plug. <laughs> Gotta get that gravy on there, boy. Um, black tape or white tape? Black. White. I actually like can't go back. It like messes with my head because I've been using it my whole life. I don't know about you, but like, I swear to God, I can shoot harder with the tape color that I like. Yeah. I guess. Like when I'm when I'm stick hand, like I went back to black one time. I just like couldn't like. Couldn't see the box for some reason. I was like, what the fuck? Xbox or PlayStation? Don't say the an wrong answer. PlayStation. Xbox. Man. Yeah, I remember I remember back in COVID, we used to play with this guy and you'd be just, you'd be like, Oh, you wanna get on channel lane? And he'd be like, No, I got Xbox. Yeah. Auto Fortnite's for that, so Okay, yeah. who's the best in Fort? You guys any good at Fort? No. I was awful. Man, who was good that we used to play with? No. Like, you mean anyone we yeah. know? I mean, I got a buddy from home, Bent. When he was in COVID, man, that guy could play. Like, he was, like, in competitions and stuff. So he's probably the best Fortnite player I've ever seen. Yeah, my buddy Clint, he's, like, nasty at every single game for some reason. Like, <laughs> it's just unreal. Now, final one before... We end this off. Do you tuck the skate toes or not? Like skate tongue? Yeah, like the oh, tongue. I tuck everything. I go for the Europe tuck. Yeah, I tuck. If you don't tuck, I think that there's something going on there that shouldn't be going on if you're just letting the tongue hang. It's either like you're nasty and you can go no no tuck, no tuck or like 
you just like yeah like i think if you're going tongues out like you you better be scoring at least three goals a game any motivational words before we end off i don't know how it be just i mean i just keep it simple here just have a good time i mean enjoy it all i mean i look back on stuff and be like oh like I wish I could go back and do that again. Canada Games is definitely something I wish I could go back and redo. It's like super fun, so I think just enjoy the moment and embrace it all. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Like, you go to like a big tournament or something, enjoy it. You're never gonna have that. You're never gonna do that tournament again. Or like something like that, like Atlantics. You're never gonna do that again. Like Canada Games. For the next guys, you gotta enjoy it because you won't. You, there's no way back to that. It's like the best time of your lives. Awesome, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks.